Okay class, today we're in section 3.1, plot points in a coordinate plane. 3.1, plot points in a coordinate plane. Before, you graph numbers on a number line. Now, you will identify and plot points in a coordinate plane. Key vocabulary, quadrants, coordinate plane, ordered pair. You have used a coordinate plane to graph ordered pairs whose coordinates were non-negative. If you were to extend the x-axis and the y-axis to include negative values, you divide the coordinate plane into four regions called quadrants, labeled quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4 as shown. Quadrant 1 is located right here, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4. Points in quadrant 1 have two positive coordinates. Points in the other three quadrants have at least one negative coordinate. So in quadrant 1, x is always positive and y is always positive. In quadrant 2, x is negative and y is positive. In quadrant 3, x is negative and y is also negative. And in quadrant 4, x is positive and y is negative. For example, point P is in quadrant 4 and has an s coordinate of 3 and a y coordinate of negative 2. A point on the x axis such as point Q is not considered to be in any of the four quadrants. All right, now the coordinate 0, 0, that's called the origin. Here you can see this point right here, it lies on the x-axis at coordinates negative 4, 0. Point P is in the fourth quadrant, and it has coordinates x of 3 and y is negative 2. Reading. The s-coordinate of a point is sometimes called the abscissa. The y-coordinate of a point is sometimes called the ordinate. Example 1. Name points in a coordinate plane. Give the coordinates of the point A and B. Solution. Point A is 3 units to the left of the origin and 4 units up. So its s-coordinate is negative 3 and the y-coordinate is 4. The coordinates are negative 3, 4. So once again, here's point A, and its coordinates are, the x value is negative 3, 1, 2, 3, and the y value is 1, 2, 3, 4. So our answer would be negative 3, 4. For point B, point B is 2 units to the right of the origin and 3 units down. So the x-coordinate is 2 and the y-coordinate is negative 3. The coordinates are 2, negative 3. So once again, take a look at point B. There's point B right there. x-coordinate is at 2, 1, 2. y-coordinate is at 3, 1, 2, 3. And that should be a negative 3. So once again, the coordinates of point B, 2, and negative 3. And notice the x value is always first. x, then y, x, then y. Also notice that point B is located in the fourth quadrant. Once again, quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, quadrant 4. Right here is the origin. You have your x, you have your y axis, and you have your x axis. All right, now let's plot, let's plot point C, 0, negative 4. All right, begin at the origin and move 4 units down. Point C is on the y-axis. So we start at the origin. That's because the x value is 0. And then we're going to go down 4 units. 1, 2, 3, 4. So C, 0, negative 4, is plotted on the y-axis. Example 3. Graph a function. Graph the function y is equal to 2x minus 1 with a domain of negative 2 
negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Don't forget, domain means x. So they're giving you the x values. By the way, if they don't give you the x values, then use these same uh, numbers here. Then identify the range of the function. Don't forget, the range is our y values. Solution, step 1. Make a table by substituting the domain values into the function. So we make our table. And your table has to be made just like this. All right. You list your x values. They give you negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. You state your function or the equation. And then you're going to show your substitution and work as you plug in. So we get y is equal to 2. That 2 is in the equation. Times x, which is a negative 2. We just plug that in. Minus 1. And then we do our math. 2 times a negative 2 is a negative 4. Negative 4 minus 1 is equal to a negative 5. Next, we plug in 1 in, uh, negative 1 in for x. So y is equal to 2 times negative 1 minus 1. 2 times a negative 1 is a negative 3. Negative 3 minus 1 is equal to, excuse me, 2 times a negative 1 is a negative 2. Negative 2 minus 1 is a negative 3. Our next value is 0. So in place of uh, x, we're going to put 0. So now we got y is equal to 2 times 0 minus 1. 2 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 1 is a negative 1. Next, we plug in 1. In place of x, we're going to put the 1. So we get 2 times 1 minus 1. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. Next, we plug in the 2. So in place of x, we're going to put in 2. So now we get y is equal to 2 times 2 minus 1. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 1 is equal to 3. So now we know our domain, which is our x values, and we know our range, which is all the y values that correspond to each x value. Step 2. List the ordered pairs. So now we have our ordered pairs. Negative 2, negative 5. Next we got negative 1 and negative 3. Next we got 0 and 1, 0 and negative 1, 0 and negative 1. Next we got 1 and 1. And then last but not least we got 2 and 3. Then graph the function. So now we're going to graph each one of these points. After doing so, your graph will look like this. Alright, so let's say we want to graph negative 2, negative 5. So, negative 2, negative 5 means we started the origin. We go over 1, 2. That's a negative 2 on the x-axis, and then we go down 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Next, excuse me, we go down 5 because it's a negative 5. Next, we got negative 1, negative 3. So, negative 1 on the x-axis. Negative 3 means we go down on the y-axis. 1, 2, 3. Next, we have 0 and negative 1. So, x is 0. We go down 1 for negative 1. Next, we have 1 and 1. x is 1. y is 1. So over 1 for the x, up 1 for the y. Last but not least, x is 2, y is 3. So we start the origin. x is 2, 1, 2. y is 3. That's a positive 3. So we go up. 1, 2, 3. That's our point. Step 3. Identify the range. The range consists of the y values from the table. So the range would be negative 5. That's all these values here. Negative 5, negative 3, negative 1, 1, and 3. Analyze the function. The function in example 3 is called a discrete function. The graph of a, of a discrete function consists of isolated points. And those are what they're saying is whenever you see a graph, and if all the graph has on it is its points, and no line is connecting the points, then the graph is said to be discrete. No line is connecting the points together. So the graph is said to be discrete. Alright, now if the points were connected by a straight line as such, then this would be called a continuous graph. A continuous graph. That means that all the points in between also count along with the points that are plotted. Once again, all the points that are in between the points that are plotted are also uh, um, counted along with the points that have been plotted originally. Once again, discrete would mean the only points that count would be here, 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 
here and here. The points in between either mean nothing or make no sense. Here's an example. If we were to count the number of people in the classroom, that would be like a whole number. Like we would say like one, maybe there's one person in the classroom. Um, maybe there's uh, 10 people in the classroom. You understand what we're saying? But in here, in between here, we would get something like 1.5, 1.6, 1.7. Well, you can't have like a tenth or a fifth or a half of a person. So therefore, the numbers in between would make no sense. Now, if we did something like we connected the points that we said before and make a straight line, that graph would be called continuous. Once again, if we connect the points and make a straight line, that would be called continuous. Let's say we were discussing the amount of rainfall in the course of a month. That means the numbers that were plotted, they would count, and so the numbers in the middle. Because the rainfall could be like 1.2 inches, 1.3, 1.4. Okay, so once again, continuous means the line would be connected. Discrete means it would be dots only. Discrete and continuous. Every point counts along with the points in between. Example four, graph a function represented by a table. Voting. In 1920, the ratification of the 19th Amendment to the United States Constitution gave women the right to vote. The table shows the number to the nearest million of votes cast in presidential elections both before and since women were able to vote. Years before or since 1920. Negative 12, negative 8, negative 4, 0, 4, 8, 12. Votes in the million. 15 million, 15 million, 19 million, 27 million, 29 million, 37 million, 40 million. Now notice, negative 4 means 4 years before 1920 or 1916. 0 represents the year 1920. A. Explain how you know that a table represents a function. B. Graph the function represented by the table. And C. Describe any trend in the number of votes cast. Solution A. The table represents a function because each input value has exactly one output value. In other words, the x values do not repeat. Don't forget x is input. The x values do not repeat. So therefore, it is a function. B. Graph the function represented by the table. So you either use graph paper or make your own coordinate grid. It is best to have your own graph paper saves you time um, and then graph each point okay now you notice on the graph here that they're growing in increments of 4 so 4 8 12 16 here's 0 4 8 12 16 alright now let's take a look at one or two of the coordinates to be sure we understand what's going on like for example here x is 0 y is 27 so x is 0 y is 27, so that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 6 times um, 4 is 24. So that would be 28. So 27 has to be slightly below that. Okay. All right here we got uh, 4 and 29. Here x is 4, and then that's 29. So, and we know this is 28 because once again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 times 4 is 28. So 29 has to be just a little bit above that. Okay, so that's how they're going about graphing that. Now C, describe any trend in the number of the votes cast. In the three year election, in the three election years before 1920, the number of votes cast was less than 20 million. In 1920, the number of votes cast was greater than 20 million. The number of votes cast continued to increase in the three election years since 1920. Now don't forget 1920 occurs when x is 0. 
So the years after 1920, one, two, three, three years, there was an increase. Here, about the same in 